Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to talk about the paradox of international criminal courts, and specifically we're going to ask the question, should we bring war criminals to justice? And I know your gut reaction is probably, of course we should. I mean, these are war criminals, they're bad people. The point of a court is to get rid of bad people, to put them away, to make them serve time for all of the bad things that they did, essentially bringing justice to them. And while I agree that all of those things are good, we should, in theory, be bringing people to justice. The cold reality of it, though, is that international criminal courts can have unintended side effects. And so if we're going to have an intelligent conversation about the usefulness of international criminal courts, we need to be aware of this sort of trade-off that I'm going to talk about today. So we're going to look at two games. We're going to look at a game first where there's a world where no international court criminal courts exist, and then we'll transition into a game where international criminal courts do exist, and then we're going to compare the welfare of the players in both of these worlds. So this is the game with inter no international criminal courts. We have a dictator in the United Nations, uh, a dictator who's been doing some bad things, can either fight for his life, uh, essentially he can continue fighting a war and try to, to ensure that he'll be able to stay in power by winning the war, or he can resign. And if he resigns, then the United Nations can't prosecute him because there is no international criminal court here. And so the United Nations just simply has to grant the dictator immunity. In a second, we'll replace this with what happens if the United Nations could actually pursue it in a court. Okay, so how do we solve this game? Well, there's really only one strategic move here. Obviously, the United Nations doesn't have a strategic move. It just has to make the immunity choice. It doesn't have an option there. The only real choice in this game is whether the dictator should fight or resign. And whether he should fight or resign is going to be based off of what happens in the fight outcome. So in the fight outcome, the nature chooses whether he wins or loses. He wins with probability 0.5, and then he gets 6 if he loses, and, or 6 if he wins. That's the best outcome for him. And he gets a 0 if he loses. That's the idea that... You know, if he fights a war and he loses, then, you know, for example, Gaddafi in Libya, he died, right? So it's really bad if you fight a war and you lose because usually the rebels find you and they kill you. So that's a really bad outcome for him. He gets a zero there. And a middle outcome for him is if he resigns and the United Nations grants him immunity because he gets to have uh, a nice retirement, gets to live in a nice place, gets to keep some of his money, uh, but it's, it's much better than dying, but not as good as continuing to be in charge of your country, which is what happens if he wins. Now, alternatively, if the dictator wins, then that's the worst outcome for the United Nations. It gets a negative two for that. And if the dictator loses, then the United Nations is happier because then the dictator gets to be brought to full justice, but it's going to be costly to fight the war. So there's going to be a subtraction of a payoff there. And so that's why that's a four. And it's just going to be on par with if the United Nations granted immunity here and got a four there. So the way we collapse this part of the game tree is just by multiplying the probabilities by their associated payoffs and adding them up. So if you multiply 0 0.5 times 6, you get 3. And then 0 0.5 times 0, you get 0. So 3 plus zero equals three. So the dictator's payoff for fighting is going to be three. And then you do the same thing for the United Nations. So 0.5 times negative two is negative one. And then you add that to 0.5 times four, which is two. So negative one plus two is one. And if I did my calculations right, it's going to match up to this slide right here. And sure enough, I did it correctly. And so now we just have a regular old game tree. And this is really easy for us to solve now. So we just look at what is optimal for the dictator in this, in this case. We see that if he resigns and the United Nations has to grant him immunity, he gets a payoff of four. Alternatively, if he were to fight up here, he gets a three. So if we've isolated these payoffs here, the blue four and the blue three, those are the choices the dictator really has to care about. And we see that this four is greater than this three, so the dictator would want to resign in this case. So the conclusion here is that in a world without international criminal courts, you get this outcome where the dictator resigns and the United Nations grants immunity and both of them get a payoff of four. All right, now let's transition into a world where there are criminal courts. So now we have to give the United Nations a move here. So if the dictator resigns, then the United Nations can either choose to prosecute the dictator or grant him immunity. And of course, if uh, the United Nations prosecutes the dictator, that's really bad because he has to go spend his life in jail and ultimately he'll die there. And that's really good for the United Nations because now they didn't have to pay for the costs of war uh, and they still get to bring the dictator to justice. So that's really good for them. The United Nations gets a six. And of course, if the dictator fights, then you have this, this war payoff over here, which I've already collapsed just as I did before. So there's a payoff of three for the dictator and one for the United Nations. The way we solve this game again is just like any other game with backward induction. So we start at the bottom and work our way up. 
So we imagine that the dictator, in fact, resigns and then see what's optimal for the United Nations to do in response. So if we isolate the United Nations payoffs here, we see that the United Nations gets six for prosecuting, four for granting immunity. So six is greater than four. That means if the dictator resigns, the United Nations would uh, grant or would not grant immunity, but would rather prosecute the dictator. So if we backtrack a step, we now know that if the dictator resigns, the United Nations prosecutes him and he gets a zero. Alternatively, he can fight and he'll get a three. So fighting is better than resigning and being prosecuted and getting a zero. So that means the dictator, dictator is going to fight. And we have an outcome here with international courts where the dictator fights and he gets a payoff of three and the United Nations gets a payoff of one. But the rub here is if one, well, when we compare the payoffs, we see that the world is actually better for both players when international criminal courts don't exist. So to review here, when no international criminal courts exist, the dictator resigns because he knows that the United Nations can't uh, prosecute him because there are no international courts. And so he'll be guaranteed a nice little payoff here of four. And the United Nations ends up pretty well off as well because at least there was no war fought, right? We didn't have to pay the cost of war. So the United Nations gets a good payoff. Both of them get payoffs of four here. But when there are international criminal courts, the dictator fights and he gets a three and the United Nations gets one. So having these international criminal courts actually reduces both players' payoffs. The dictator is getting three here. He got four over here. The United Nations is getting one here and the United Nations is getting four over here. So what's the dilemma here? Why do we even bother with international criminal courts if this sort of puts dictators in a more resolute state and forces them to fight? Well, you know, as I just mentioned, the dilemma here is that international criminal courts do entrench evil dictators. They know they're going to be prosecuted if they leave office. So they put up a fight if they're challenged. And so in a one-time interaction, because remember, this game was just a one-time interaction. It was just one dictator and one case with the United Nations. In this one-time intera uh, one interaction, these international criminal courts are really, really bad because it ends up putting us in a situation where we're worse off than had the courts not existed. But the key thing here is that they discourage future, future evil dictators. So if a dictator just entered office, he might play nice with his people in order to avoid future prosecution because he'll know it's coming. If he's ever caught in a situation that's bad for him, then he'll have to fight. And that's pretty bad for him too because that's a worse payoff than if he just gets exile. He's granted exile and he's not prosecuted. So he might just play nice with his population and this will allow him to be able to live in exile without the United Nations prosecuting him. And so this is good for him and it's also good for the people because there are no human rights violations occurring in this country because this evil dictator is sort of playing nice in response to the presence of these international criminal courts. So the real question, though, is, is it worth giving up something in the short term, having to pay higher costs and having to fight against these dictators to establish the legitimacy of these international criminal courts? Or should we just play the short game and not try to establish them and save ourselves from these wars? And so if you just want to summarize this in one simple question, are international courts a, uh, a good thing? And the answer really is who knows? I've given you the, the sides, the arguments for both sides, and really there is no clear cut answer here. It's just something that is important for you to think about and important for you to know if you're going to have an informed opinion on this policy debate. I hope you learned something and I will see you next time.